it's Nancy Sumner. How are you? Good. So did you guys uh, find the streamer on the Air Force flag? Okay, thanks.
We will now reconvene. Okay, we will now move to, uh, let's see, we are missing one uh, member, Member Van Loon. There he, is. there he is. Okay. We will now move to uh, uh, action item 2.7, election of board officers. This item recommends that the Board of Governors elect the uh, President, the Vice President of the Board for the 2015 uh, calendar year. And I will begin with the election for President. We will now have we, public comment. We do have one public comment on this item. Alvin Ja. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Alvin Ja. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but I've been coming to these meetings since uh, one year ago in November of uh, 2013. And uh, one of the things that impressed me was when the rookies came on board, uh, uh, Colonel Sumner, uh, Ms. Estelano, uh, Mr. Budnick, uh, Mr. Avalos, who I believe is in here, uh, I was very impressed with how engaged, uh, how informed, and how much they looked into the reading material. And uh, regarding the, the election, in spite of the fact that Ms. Estelano is a rookie, uh, I would recommend that she be elected as Vice President, because her questions have been extremely critical and incisive, and I think we need that. Thank you. Uh, we will now move for uh, election for President. Uh, we have uh, one nomination. For all those in favor of Mr. Baum for President, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. Uh, the ayes have it, and Mr. Baum is elected president for calendar year 20. I, I thought there was going to be some big presidential speech, no? <laughs> no, no, not, no speech. I, I will keep it short that. and sweet. I know we have a big agenda. I'll just say thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be elected uh, by this board. I'm very proud. We'll have the bigger speech next. 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 Uh, that was a little uh, disheartening. <laughs> I, I, Let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. I have some things I'd like to share, but I'll do it during board reports tomorrow. <laughs> president Baca. We will now move on to election for uh, vice president, and uh, here candidates are uh, voted on in order, nominated um, according to Robert's rules of order. Uh, the pursuant to our procedures and standing orders govern the election of our officers. I will now ask for votes in support of the first person who was nominated for vice president. If that individual receives a majority of votes, the member will be elected. If the individual does not receive a majority, we uh, then ask for votes. Uh, I will ask for votes in favor of the second person nominated for vice president. So with that, uh, the first person no nominated, uh, Mrs. Estelano. Uh, all those in favor of Ms. Estelano for Vice President, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. 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 Okay. Um, the ayes have it, and uh, Ms. Estelano is now, is now elected. Congratulations to uh, members uh, Baum and Estelano. Pursuant to the Board of Governors Procedures Standing Orders, Section 60, the new officers will take office at our last, as at our last order of business at the meeting uh, tomorrow. And with that, we will now move on to the first reading, item uh, 3.1, um, the non-resident uh, tuition exemption regulations. Uh, Vice Chancellor Makalowski, or Chancellor. Thank you, First Bond members of the board. I will uh, ask uh, Vice Chancellor Mikulowski to uh, cover this uh, issue on non-resident tuition. Linda? 
President Baca, Chancellor Harris, members of the board. Um, this item presents for first reading a change, uh, proposed change to your regulations regarding the exemption from non-resident tuition for um, a group of students uh, commonly known as AB 540 students and um, anyone who um, uh, essentially grew up in the state of California, attended, uh, attended high school here, um, received a, a high school diploma or its equivalent here, um, regardless of their uh, immigration status or regardless of their current or their, their most recent uh, place of residence. The um, AB 540 provisions in, in, your, in current law and in your current regulations say that an individual who attended a California high school for more than three years, graduated from a California high school or attained the equivalent, and um, if it's an undocumented student, uh, signs an affidavit that indicates they have applied for a legal status or will do so uh, when eligible, uh, can be exempted from paying non-resident tuition, and um, that also makes them eligible for a BOG fee waiver and other state aid. Um, in this last legislative session, Assemblymember Gomez sponsored legis uh, carried legislation uh, that made one minor change to the criteria for determining who is eligible for this exemption. In order to accommodate um, students who advance through the high school curriculum, um, the, the, the change in law would now allow someone who has a high school diploma or the equivalent to qualify for the exemption if they either attended a California high school for three years or attained the equivalent of three years of high school credit and attended any combination of California elementary and secondary schools for at least three years. So it's a very, um, it's a very subtle change in the law and proposed for your regulations so that a student who can get through the high school curriculum in less than three years um, is still eligible for this tuition exemption uh, at the community college. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions and uh, this is a first item, a first reading item. Uh, so it will come back for your um, further consideration at your next meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We will now move to uh, item three point. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Michalowski. Uh, we will now move to first reading of item 3.2, change to Board of Governors regulations on accreditation. President Baca, members of the board, um, I uh, would call your attention to page 51 in your packet. Uh, this uh, item again is uh, as the, was the last one for first reading. Um, as the uh, board is aware, the uh, current board regulations specify the uh, Accrediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges, ACCJC, as the accrediting body for all of our colleges. Uh, this uh, recommended uh, regulation change would uh, remove that level of specificity and uh, require that the uh, board consider the accreditor and that the board make the decision uh, which accreditor would accredit our colleges. With that, I'm gonna ask general counsel uh, to uh, give you a, uh, answer any questions you have and provide any detail I did not. Michelle? I thought that was fully covered. I don't have anything to add. <laughs> Very good. Well, we do have some public comments, so uh, Vice President Bond. First is Richard Hansen, followed by Jonathan Lightman. Hello, I'm here representing the California Community College Independence. We're the faculty union that's unaffiliated with any larger organization. And uh, we support uh, these changes to the regulations. Um, what we would like to say, and this is something that came up in consultation, uh, faculty felt that we should have in there also a period of review. In the discussion at Consultation Council, it was thought that we should review this every three years, uh, but there was some discussion about that, and 
we'd be happy with any period of, um, of review. That is, you'd, it would come to the board and to the chancellor um, in a periodic way for you to rethink where you are and who you've chosen and uh, make that decision or reaffirm it, uh, make a decision to change or reaffirm affirm it. Um, the other thing that we noticed is that we had in here, and this was not discussed at consultation, was it stipulates a regional accreditor. And uh, I don't know that we need that word regional um, because, and this also came out of the consultation discussion, we have complete faith that the chancellor will do due diligence and come to you with a very um, highly recommended accreditor. All things taken into consideration, then you will deliberate and make the right decision. I don't think you need to be hemmed in in any way in that decision. It's just that you would pick a viable accreditor periodically. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, Chancellor, and members. Uh, Jonathan Lightman, on behalf of the Faculty Association of California Community Colleges, will align our comments with the uh, with Mr. Hansen and the independents, and and just to note that these recommendations are also consistent with the auditor in the Bureau of State Audit Report on accreditation. Thank you. Vice President Mom. So I, I had a couple of questions, and, and one of them echoed uh, Mr. Hansen's comments. Um, is there a, a requirement for regional accreditation? I've actually participated in accreditation teams for, for more uh, area-specific accreditation rather than <coughs> regional. I believe the answer to that is yes, that you have to be accredited by a regional accreditor. So this is actually redundant of what the federal requirement is. Um, but I would have to double check that. So we, we can, I, would ho I would hope we review that and, and if it allows us more flexibility, strike the word regional. The other question that I had though, as we look at regional, we could look at any of the regional accreditors across the United States as a possible uh, source of accreditation like the Mid-Atlantic's no, or how well, would that work? You, at this point, the U.S. Department of Education certifies a creditor to operate in certain regions. So according to the current U.S. Department of Education regulations, a regional accreditor in another part of the country is not authorized to operate in this region. I see. But they could if... If, uh... if the U.S. Department of Education made that choice. The, the other consideration or option is that it is possible for the U.S. Department of Education to authorize the other accreditor, regional accreditor in this region to... Uh, Who is the other accreditor? The WASC senior. So, but, wa right, wa ACCJC is part of WASC, right? Well, l less so than they used to be. It used to be a, a corporate body with three independent, the Schools Commission, the Senior Commission, and the Community College Commission. In recent uh, actually the last year or so, they have, they have uh, separated more uh, completely. But uh, e yes, the, the senior commission is authorized by the U.S. Department of Education to accredit institutions in the western region. So the, the que then the question is, does WASC accredit any other community colleges uh, not connected, through, uh, not through ACCJC? No, it does not. No, but they, they could be they could develop a, an accreditation they process. They could be recognized by the United States Department of Education as an accreditor for community colleges. Currently, they are not. I see. And then, okay, uh, and Karen just gave me, uh, actually, there's a number of, um, there's one other, there's a couple of other public comments, so I don't know if we want to continue board conversation. Uh, is there, well, is there any uh, board conversation? Cecilia and others, mm -hmm. yeah. Member Van Loon, or? Why don't we go ahead and do more public comment? I can ask a question. Is that okay? That's, yeah. Okay, completely. let's do the public comment first, and then we'll uh, come back to board discussion. Tim Kelly, followed by Alvin Jaw, and then I'll ask Martin Hittleman also to come forward. And why don't, why don't everybody come forward? I'll do three at a time because I have a, a number of them. So Tim Kelly, followed by Mr. Jaw, followed by Matt, Martin Hittleman. Yes, uh, thank you very much um, uh, for letting me address the, uh, the board. Um, on this item, um, I want to thank Chancellor Harris for putting it on the agenda. Um, the time has come for the ACCJC's monopoly to end. Uh, there is no reason for it. Um, the, 
the, the actions at um, CCSF um, are only really the tip of the iceberg of what has occurred. We've seen that throughout the entire system, the level of sanctions relative to other regional accreditors is literally off the charts. And um, this process, uh, we hope that this is not only to be a sort of symbolic process where we're expressing our dissatisfaction uh, of what's been happening in the accreditation in California community colleges, but actually the beginning of a process where um, we could actually have alternative accreditor uh, here in California. And so um, I'm actually very encouraged by hearing the questions that are being asked. They really seem to be getting to the heart of the matter to like, what would actually we be doing? Uh, what would actually occur? What would be the transition? All these are really very uh, important questions and I'm really very happy um, that, uh, that, they're, that you're thinking about this so that we can create finally, finally, a fair and transparent accreditation process here at the uh, community colleges in California. I want to thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Mr. Jaw, followed by Martin Hittleman. Uh, I'll follow up on uh, uh, Tim's comment about the thank you. I never thought I'd see the day where you guys would be willing to uh, pull ACCJC as, uh, uh, as the designated accreditor. Uh, my personal uh, take on this, I'm a retired blue collar worker. As a blue collar worker, we look at things as, uh, in terms of how they hit the ground, um, in terms of practical, real life consequences. You know, when uh, people up top, uh, shot callers and decision makers make their calls, they have severe consequences down on the ground. And I'm just a regular citizen and I see the consequences. Okay. Uh, the other aspect is that uh, as a blue collar worker, um, I was a bus driver, a streetcar driver, and also instructor for, for those vehicles. And uh, what we always took, uh, kept in mind was what we called the big picture. What's the big picture? You don't just look right in front of your nose. And uh, what ACCJC has done is failed to look at the big picture. And what's the big picture? In terms of their own bylaws, in, in terms of the federal code of regulations, the purpose of accreditation is very simple, to validate and to, and to improve the quality of education. Very simple, okay? But what ACCJC has done is it's taken uh, the license that uh, recognition has given them to enforce their own standards that basically don't have that much to do with improving and validating the quality of education. So uh, uh, what they've done is concentrate power into a small group of people. Uh, they've misplaced the priority into projection of power, you know, uh, amassing power among themselves for their own self-serving benefit as opposed to the benefit of the public. Okay. And, um, and basically, the feds, when they give uh, accrediting agencies recognition, they're giving those agencies, endowing them with the public trust. And what ACCJC has done in terms of what its actual application of their uh, authority has been against the public trust and uh, basically building their own self-serving empire. You have 30 seconds. Okay, okay thank you. Um, a anyway, uh, I've written, uh, I've done a written comment. Uh, I hope you've looked at it or will look at it. So I'll, I'll end it at that. Thank you. Martin Hittleman followed by David Morse. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm glad that the Board of Governors is finally moving to eliminate the monopoly that ACCJC has had. It's been amusing over the years that ACCJC has claimed to be a voluntary organization in all their publications and all their rhetoric. They say they're voluntary. Clearly, they were not voluntary. Their process, they say, is peer-driven. Obviously, it's not peer-driven. If you go out to the field, you'll see the, the field does not agree with many of 
many of the standards that they have uh, adopted. They're forcing their values on the colleges. One example is GASB 45, the pre-funding of retirement benefits, according to what the Chancellor's Office has put out, which is in agreement with GASB 45. Colleges are supposed to put it on their books, but they're not required to pre-fund it, but yet ACCJC drives colleges to pre-fund it through an organization which some of their members help drive. <laughs> faculty are still not convinced that student faculty outcome methodology is the right thing to do. And if you went, if you saw the uh, academic senate session that just ended, you'll see there's still a lot of controversy about the value of SFOs and the amount of time it takes and the ridiculousness of its requirement. They're, they're constantly calling on trustees to act in certain ways which are contrary to democratic principles. They want the trustees not to speak out as elected officials are allowed to do and they have other kinds of rules that they're pressing the trustees not to do, possibly because Barbara Bino was fired by a board of trustees. As far as a solution, uh, you might look to the North Central Association of Colleges and Schools, the North Central. They accredit colleges in Arizona and Colorado and New Mexico, close by, plus a lot of other colleges. The other is Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities, and they accredit colleges in Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Oregon, Utah, and Washington. They could be a good fit. I would suggest that the Board of Governors in consultation start looking to see if they're interested in applying to the U.S. Department of Education for the right to accredit in California's community colleges. Um, if, you, if you followed the trial at all of the people versus ACCJC, you'll, you'll hear the whole litany of lack of due process, uh, influence, biased influence, uh, summaries to the commission which are not accurate and therefore the commission votes one way whereas the Your visiting team. Yeah, okay. So in short, it's time to get rid of this rogue organization. It's time to Sorry, you have to It's conclude. time to lift their cloud of secrecy. David Morse followed by Fred Glass and then Elisa Messer. Thank you, President Baca, Chancellor Harris, uh, board members. The Academic Senate would like to align our support with that of our colleagues Richard Hansen from CI and Jonathan Lightman from FAC. In spring 2014, the Academic Senate passed Resolution 2.01, which called for the Senate to, quote, work with the appropriate bodies to remove references to one specific accrediting agency in Title V and to replace the language with a neutral statement that California community colleges shall be accredited by a regional, federally accredited agency, end quote. The, section, the action under consideration is therefore consistent with the wishes of the fa faculty of the California Community Colleges as expressed through the position taken by our delegates. The Academic Senate thanks the Chancellor's Office for proposing this change and wishes to express our support. Fred Glass followed by Elisa Messer. Is there Fred Glass? Why don't you go ahead and get started and just give uh, the, the statement to Karen and she'll distribute it to the board, please. Chancellor Harris, President Baca, and members of the board, good afternoon. My name is Fred Glass. Thank you for taking a moment to hear my views delivered on behalf of the 25,000 community college members of the California Federation of Teachers and CFT President Joshua Peshtalt regarding Agenda Item 3.2. I ask that these written comments, which I will provide to the board, they're being passed around, be made a part of the record of this proceeding. I am speaking in favor of this change. As you know, the CFT filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Education last spring, spring before last, regarding numerous violations by the ACCJC of accreditation standards, California law, and their own policies. Our claims about ACCJC's disregard 
for its own rules and accreditation norms drew a reprimand letter from the Department of Education to the ACCJC warning the agency to clean up its act. In the meantime, however, the ACCJC has continued to violate many of the same norms and laws while passing new policies to appear as if it is now in compliance. It continues, for instance, to field site teams to colleges without anything resembling balance between the numbers of administrative and faculty members and compounds the violation by claiming, quote, academic, unquote, status for administrators. Two weeks ago, the ACCJC faced a week-long trial in San Francisco where compelling evidence was presented showing that this accrediting commission's officers and staff rec recklessly attempted to destroy access to public higher education for 80,000 students with its unjustified show cause sanction in a clear demonstration of disparate treatment for City College of San Francisco compared to other colleges. We fully expect the judge to order a new review of City College, this time conducted in a fair and lawful fashion. The ACCJC is an agency that is out of compliance and out of control. We realize that further steps will need to be taken before another entity might be able to perform the complex and important work of accreditation of California's community colleges. But this step is a necessary prerequisite to those other ones. It is past time to end the monopoly over accreditation exercised by a commission that has shown by its disregard for fairness, for law, for its own policies, and for the educational future of 80,000 students that it cannot be trusted and does not deserve to hold that position any longer. I urge you to approve this change to Title V. Thank you. Alisa Messer, followed by John Rizzo. My name is Alisa Messer. I'm an English teacher at City College of San Francisco, and I'm with AFT 2121, the faculty union there. Thank you for your consideration of this new language, which our union supports as a first and necessary step. The last time I addressed this body, I asked about the disappearance of the consultation accreditation task force report. I'm very pleased to hear more recently that the task force has once again been reconvened and plans to improve and finally issue its report and will also be addressing the recommendations coming out of the Joint Legislative Audit Committee's review of the ACCJC and its practices and missteps. The evidence continues to mount. This is not the right accreditor for our colleges and this state's students. The change in language under discussion today speaks to that evidence. The ACCJC is not like other accrediting agencies. Its actions, not just at CCSF, have been irregular, inappropriate, high-handed, and vindictive, and they have resulted in a culture of fear and coercion in our colleges. Well before the agency's complex entanglement with an unfair treatment of City College of San Francisco, before show cause, before last month's stunning testimony in State Superior Court, there was growing concern in our colleges about the ACCJC, but they are rarely discussed in public. In 2011, the Research and Planning Group for California Community Colleges issued a report two years in the making titled Focusing Accreditation on Quality Improvement. The RP group was concerned at the soaring level of sanctions in California and at the discontent emerging with ACCJC's approach to the accreditation process. The research noted that, quote, transparent, open, and honest opportunities for feedback without fear of retribution are critical to a commission's relationship with member colleges. However, it reported, quote, the colleges interviewed found ACCJC generally unreceptive to constructive criticism and expressed a fear of retaliation. I have personally spoken in the last years with, city or with community college administrators, board members, faculty, staff, and students not to mention elected officials from all over the state who have grave concerns about the ACCJC's practices and not just at City College. They want City College to succeed as you do and they want the San Francisco City Attorney's Office to win its lawsuit and expose the severe problems with the ACCJC. 30 seconds. But they are afraid to say so and they'll be the first to admit that they are afraid of retribution from the ACCJC to their colleges. Your board has the heavy responsibility to protect our community college system for the millions of California students who rely on it each year in San Francisco, here in Cupertino, 
in Compton, in Fresno. Unfortunately, it has become clear that safeguarding our colleges means you must be willing to buck the cooperation trend with this current system accreditor, the ACCJC. As such, this is a good step. We support it, and we look forward to more. Thank you. Last card for public comment I have on this. I believe it's from John Rizzo. Trustee Rizzo, did you have a card? I didn't see the agenda item noted, but I, I believe you wanted to address this topic. And congratulations on your re-election. Thank you. I'll be brief. I'm, I'm, um, I'm in support of this, uh, this measure. I'm uh, very glad to see you taking the advice um, of your auditor, the state, the Joint State Legislative um, Audit Committee. Um, accreditation uh, is not working in California, as we've heard. Um, this is a good fix for it. Thank you. There are no additional comment cards. Thank you, Vice President Baum. Uh, uh, member discussion? Uh, uh, member Van Loon? Yes, I, I had one. Um, yes, uh, given the concerns brought forth by a vast number of our constituents, uh, as well as the audit report, um, this seems to be a, a vital first step. But I was wondering, are, have we sparked conversations with the Department of Ed yet um, in regard to the feasibility of being accredited by another uh, regional accreditation commission? I have had some very preliminary conversations over the last several months with the Department of Education on a variety of accreditation-related topics. Okay, and can we, um, as a board, be updated and um, given information on how those conversations are going as they proceed? Absolutely. Thank you. Member Solano. Yeah, I was uh, struck by a suggestion by Mr. Hansen um, regarding perhaps building into this process of accreditation of, of which agency we're going to use a monitoring function. And um, given the cycle of accreditation, it struck me that pretty probably the minimum you could do is review every 10 years of the agency and figure out if this is how they're doing so we wouldn't fall into that because what we don't want to do is continue to, to replace one monopoly with another monopoly so at this point since we have a first reading of this a regulation um, I guess I want to appeal to my fellow board members to consider directing staff um, to try to revise this slightly to include some sort of statement that um, the board of the chancellor and the board of Gover governors will review the appointment of the accrediting agency at a minimum once every 10 years taking into account um, the following standards and I would want to make them general enough because we don't want to confine it but some of the standards I was looking at the the highlights of the auditors report um, things about the transparency of the deliberations um, the consistency of the of the rulings um, uh, you know, they talked about it here, the commission sanctions community colleges at a higher rate than the six other regional accreditors in the nation. So just something that would, that would allow us to judge how that accrediting agency, whoever it is we might pick, um, is doing against a benchmark. Um, so that would be my suggestion to my fellow board members to think about that, that every 10 years we take a look at it. And it might be of pro forma analysis, everything's going fine, things have been brought in line, but just that we'd have to do that 10-year review would put the agency on notice that we're benchmarking them, that we're not a captive, um, we're not a captive participant of this accrediting agency. So it's just a suggestion and I throw it out for discussion purposes. Any, anyone wish to add to that discussion? Member Asumi. I just wanted to say that I think that's a very good suggestion by Member Estolano, and uh, you know I would, uh, you know, certainly be, I, I'd appreciate that. So I think that's a very good idea. Member Sumner. I mean, my life has been inspections between the military, <laughs> <laughs> between the military and the hospital accreditations, and um, I understand the frustrations and nightmares and and all of it. But I, we do have to have the accountability because you can't just put a bandaid on it, as we say. It has to be a process. Mm -hmm you know, improvements, and if there's standards that they have in here that are the same that everybody's getting graded down on, we need to really be more aware of that than, than 10 years. It's got to be, we really have a self-evaluation tool where we can look at it too, so we can offer our resources to help the people, so they're not sort of flailing as 
budgetary changes, as everything changes, we need to try to be really supportive of them. Anything else? Member, uh, I'd member. like to advocate for the addition of that language as well. Okay. Vice President Bond. I just had a question. Is it conceivable we would authorize more than one accreditor for districts? At, uh, yeah, I, it, I just wanted to know as a point of information. It, it would, uh, it, no, I don't believe that is a recommendation I'm comfortable making at this time. As you can imagine, the, the, uh, the standards put forth by an accrediting body, um, if they were different, let's say there were two or three accreditors in the state, you'd have uh, some vastly different uh, institutions responding to those. And, and it does not, at, at this point at least, make sense to me to have more than one accreditor for our colleges. Um, there is, it is suggested that the accrediting standards across the country are relatively similar, and, and I think some would argue that they are, but uh, we have a, a good deal of portability of, of people in our colleges moving from one to another in all uh, segments of employment, and, and I think that to go to multiple accreditors would be a, 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 a uh, a pathway that that we not want to go down without a whole lot more uh, thought uh, than we've had at this point and then my my last comment just would be I'm glad we're taking a look at this and and I'm glad we're pot developing some language based on the recommendation I do f believe very strongly in the system of accreditation and that institutions also need to be held accountable to standards of excellence to ensure that we, they are delivering what is promised to them and they are operating in a healthy, responsible manner. Uh, we have that pact with not only the students enrolled, but also the people of the state of California who, who fund this. And, and so I don't want it to seem, be seen as a retreat against holding institutions accountable to standards, but I also believe that uh, this language could be helpful in us as a board of governors most effectively determining what would be the best way to serve both the institutions, the students, and, and, and the taxpayers. Any further uh, comments, discussion, Member Hawkins? Thank you, President Baca. I think what we have before us as a board is a learning opportunity to make sure all members of the Board of Governors have an equal footing in accreditation and the standards. I think we need to do a training of some sort for the members that may not be aware, so at least we all are, have the same frame of reference and we know what we're slicing or dicing when we go through this. Good. All right, Chancellor, I guess you've taken our okay. interest there. And uh, if there's no other comments, we will move on. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, we are going to move uh, information report item up, uh, 4.3 City uh, College of uh, San Francisco uh, local control plan. And uh, this item presents the requested uh, plan and timeline for the return of local control to City College of uh, San Francisco. Uh, and Chancellor, please. Thank you, President Baca, members of the board. Um, the uh, background for this item is in your board packet, but let me um, add a little bit of uh, background additionally. Uh, as you recall, at your uh, meeting in November, you asked that, uh, I'm sorry, at your meeting in September, you asked that we come forward with a plan for return to local control, and we did uh, submit that uh, as part of the agenda packet. Uh, what I uh, want to do today is give you a very brief uh, background on how we got to this point, and then go over some uh, recommended uh, changes in that document as a result of the conversations you asked that I have with the trustees at the City College of San Francisco. Uh, you would uh, uh, remember that uh, in 2012, uh, the City College of uh, San Francisco requested a, a special trustee, and that special trustee was uh, placed in the college, and then later in the year, you elevated that trustee to have stay and rescind power. Then um, in July of 12, you elevated the trustee again uh, to have extraordinary powers and uh, to set aside the uh, elected board of 
of uh, trustees at the local level. Since that time, a dramatic amount of progress has been made at the college uh, on behalf of the faculty, the staff, the management team, the students, and the community. They worked extremely hard, and uh, a lot of progress has taken place. Um, one of the things that happened in the past year was the U.S. Department of Education and the ACCJC did uh, create a new what's called restoration process <clears throat> that would allow uh, an additional 24 months to a college uh, that was in danger of imminent loss of accreditation. And uh, the college did uh, make application for that uh, uh, restoration and has submitted the necessary self-study. And in fact, uh, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, there is an accrediting visiting team on the campus uh, having conversations with the college. Uh, it is our expectation that that team will make a report and that at their January meeting, the accrediting commission will make the determination uh, as to whether or not the college is admitted into restoration. It's important to note that uh, on a parallel track with this is a lawsuit brought by uh, City Attorney Herrera and uh, the document that uh, I have provided you in draft uh, is only an assumption of the restoration process. There are a myriad of alternatives available to the judge in this case, and depending on his uh, findings, uh, this uh, document could be, uh, become mute or uh, certainly become uh, altered significantly. What uh, I provided to you earlier was a, uh, a draft plan without any uh, input by the local trustees. And what I've given you today, in uh, uh, highlighted in yellow, are the changes that I have made in that. As you know, this is an information item for your discussion. But I would simply uh, underscore the advice and counsel <laughs> I got from the local trustees that I tried to weave into this document. One of the first uh, on page one was that the local trustees felt the board really didn't acknowledge the uh, uh, local voters and the election that had taken place. And so this paragraph has been added. And as uh, you can see, it uh, certainly does acknowledge uh, the results of the election and the fact that this uh, board uh, that uh, uh, will uh, be seated in January is significantly different than the board uh, that was in place when uh, you took your action. It also suggests that as a result of that, this uh, uh, change and return to local control to pl take place considerably quicker. Then on the second page, again, underlining uh, some of that, down at the end of that first full paragraph, you can see that uh, uh, I have recommended changing the uh, 12 to 18 months to 9 to 18 months. There were a uniform belief on the part of the trustees that this process needed to be uh, undertaken much quicker than uh, this initial draft had uh, recommended. Um, as you see later in that, it does say the uh, target date <clears throat> is really based on the requirements that the college demonstrate uh, full compliance with standard four on governance by the end of that restoration uh, process. And the bolded uh, sentence above there, which says the exact length of time necessary for the transition uh, would be determined by the progress of the local board. The next uh, change is to remove the phase one. Uh, uh, more than one of the trustees recommended that uh, board in-service and training uh, should be ongoing. And so you can see the multi-year series has been taken out. And uh, it's now a precursor for uh, ongoing operation of the board. And so then the phase numbers from then on uh, change. Another of the uh, recommendations was uh, from more than one trustee was that uh, pretty quickly in uh, January there be a board retreat held, and you can see an acknowledgment of that. And then finally at the bottom of the uh, last page, um, uh, uh, more than one trustee recommended the documentation of the process in order to be certain that they could uh, demonstrate for the accrediting commission that the requirements of governance had been met. And so... Uh, this uh, draft, although those changes are not numerous, I think they are important and they are the result of those conversations with the local board. Um, I, uh, again, would uh, uh, turn this over to you for your uh, conversation and discussion. I think uh, th this is a success story in the making. The other, only other incident we've had in the state and uh, Recent history was with Compton uh, College that ultimately lost its accreditation, and they're now seven years into that process and not even close to the uh, 
process of uh, regaining that accreditation, which is at least a three to five year process in and of itself. Um, if uh, we are successful in transitioning this uh, college uh, back to the uh, local board uh, quickly and the college is successful in regaining uh, uh, full accreditation, then uh, I think uh, the uh, uh, actions the board has taken will be uh, certainly justified and underscored. I think it's uh, been a uh, very difficult uh, process, not only for this board, but especially for the college, and I applaud the work of the faculty, the staff, uh, the students, and the leadership of the college, and I will say I was uh, very favorably impressed with the uh, uh, conversations I had with individual board members um, last week. With that, I'll answer your questions, and then I'll uh, uh, go to any conversation you want to have on uh, this with the public. Uh, Chancellor, would you like to respond to some questions from the, the, the board, or can we go to public comment? We can do that uh, after public comment, if you like. Do, do it after public comment. Mm -hmm. um, we will uh, now have public comment and then return to uh, member discussion on Just this. to uh, let the public know, too, we have 25 comment cards for three minutes apiece, and we do welcome and we're grateful for the input from the public, but I did want to give you the, a sense of the scale of the comment, uh, request for comment that we've received. We'll call the first three to uh, the table, which are newly elected or, or two newly elected and one re-elected trustee, Amy Bacharach, Bridget Davila, and John Rizzo, if you could come forward and, and be in the comment period. With uh, Ms. Bacharach first. And each individual, as you saw on the card, is limited to three minutes of comment. And is there a, um, Bridget Davila? Right here. Is Amy Bacharach? Uh, Dr. Bacharach had to leave. Okay. She was uh, with her infant daughter. Oh, so. yes. And then after that will be Mr. Kilkelly again. Kilkelly. Please. Okay, in view of the fact that you have 25 other commenters, I will be very brief. And um, I want to first of all say I appreciate some of the changes that are here uh, since our meeting with um, Bryce Harris the other day. Uh, but I do want to say that there's one part in particular that I would like to see change, and that is um, just leaving out the part on the second page that says that the process will take no more than 18 months. You can just leave, but is envisioned to take no less than nine months. I think that accomplishes a lot. We're a talented bunch, I believe, and we're ready to go, and we're looking forward to steering City College over these rocky shores. As you pointed out, there's a fairly new board, so um, I think that all of us are appreciative of the training that we're going to get, and we're looking forward to really starting in on this. And I don't see why it would take longer than nine months. Thank you. Mr. Rizzo? Thank you. Uh, thank you to um, uh, Chancellor Harris for making these changes. I, I do appreciate um, uh, your incorporating um, our, our comments. Um, I guess my main, my main comment is that um, um, I think uh, the requirement of no less than nine months is, is too long, that we could do it sooner than that, um, and that we should not have to wait for nine months no matter what. I just wanted to um, mention a few things. The board was suspended um, two weeks after passing a, a balanced budget with a surplus, a fully funded reserve, and an eight-year plan that um, was unprecedented for all the community colleges. Um, we started meeting uh, an average uh, of weekly, once a week after the show cause decision. Um, we uh, accomplished a lot. At one meeting in October, um, we, we recreated from the ground up the shared governance system. We um, restructured uh, the way uh, the deans are, are, are um, the dean structure and their job descriptions. Um, and we revised at that one meeting 36 policies all at once. And there were more uh, other ones that we also re revised. In fact, we, we passed every recommendation that the special trustee had had put put in front of us. We passed every one. Most of them were unanimous, and um, 
uh, still we did not get accreditation. Despite all of that, despite us following the directions of the special trustee, we did not get accreditation. What we did find, however, because of the trial, was that the, the, uh, the panel, the, the evaluation panel of ACCJC unanimously recommended not revoking accreditation, but recommended probation. So those 18 months, um, or the, that time when the special trustee was working with us, did not move the ACC management, despite all the evidence to the contrary. Um, what City College needs now is a return to normalcy to get our, um, our numbers of students up. We've lost um, 35,000 students because of, of the idea that City College is going to close any day now. Um, returning the board to power would demonstrate th to our students and prospective students that they don't have to worry. Um, Seconds. Um, okay, I, I recommend um, that uh, uh, the, the idea for a retreat, I think that's very important. We need to do that. I think the board needs to be allowed uh, to participate in closed sessions right away with the administration so that it is brought up to speed in what is going on at City College. We've been kept in the dark for the past 18 months. We don't know what's going on because the administration has not been communicating with us. We need to start closed sessions immediately. The other thing, um, one other thing, last thing, is that uh, this does not mention the court's decision that is coming out next month. The court will decide, make some kind of decision on the trial uh, on the city's lawsuit against the accrediting agency. We don't know what that is. But it could be a variety of things that will drastically change uh, what ACCJC uh, has put forward. And this plan does not address that. So I hope that <clears throat> the, the, um, the board here will understand that it may need to come back quickly, depending on what the court does. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Kelly, followed by Mr. Jaw, followed by Mr. Hittleman. Thank you again, uh, Tim Kelly, AFT 2121 President, Faculty Union, City College of San Francisco. Um, what does City College really need? It needs to end the uncertainty. And unfortunately, this proposal put forward here does not really do that. What it does is it gives the message to the public that what is wrong with City College that it needs to have uh, 18 months before its new elected officials will come into power and make decisions around this. So all the impending uh, enrollment crisis that has occurred because of the show cause order and then the disaccreditation order, um, it's not being addressed by this. People need to know that it's being returned to the to the college that they knew for many, many years instead of it being in some sort of special uh, state takeover on a permanent kind of ba on a semi-permanent basis. So I don't think that the it's uh, significant changes that are made. Although I, I do see that some changes were made after discussions uh, with the board of trustee members, and I do appreciate that. But the number that really needs to change is is that 18 months. That 18 months is just way too long. There is no way that that should happen. The people should be have some kind of training session, I can understand that, and then they need to get to work. They've been elected to do it, they came here, they're ready, uh, they're serious people. You've even said yourself, you had a very good impression of them, they're ready to do their jobs, you need to make sure that that happens. Um, the special trustee at City College is really not needed. Uh, their college is nowhere near insolvency. Uh, we have huge reserves. We have stabilization funding. What's really needed is for the local board to get local control again. And I, I just have to say this also, there's, it's very ironic to me that I'm seeing this, um, the democracy commitment, and it's actually the item right before, at least on the agenda, it was before until it was changed. Um, it, it's so ironic 
because here it is, we're going around promoting this great project, which I've read about. I used to work with the, I'm a political scientist. I work with a voter registration project statewide, actually. So I'm really committed to the kind of things that are in here. And then it's a question of, well, like, where is the practice, right? So I teach political theory in the last couple of days. Actually, I've been teaching about uh, the relationship between theory and practice. So it's time that the theory is great, and this is a great project, and I totally endorse it and support it. And uh, now the time has come for to, you know what they say, to walk the, to walk the talk, you know? And uh, so it's time to do that. So make your democracy commitment right here. You, you can make it there, but you can make it here as well. Bring back the board. Thank you very much. Alvin Jaw, followed by Martin Hittleman. Well, what I'd like to tell you is this. You're going to hear a lot of people say that uh, we want the board back right now, but I kind of doubt if you're going to do that. So uh, I'm going to move ahead and uh, talk about my written submission that I hope you all looked at. And uh, what, what it's all about is that uh, Amiano's bill 2087, AB 2087, uh, CCR, 84040 talks about benchmarks, benchmarks for the return uh, uh, to the uh, uh, Board of Trustees. Now, like I said before, I'm a practical person, okay? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that you see are what I call amorphous, okay? So uh, what my written comment gave in terms of that uh, in-service training and orientation uh, talks about very specific and practical benchmarks, and I'll just read it to you. And uh, I think Ms. Bacharach uh, said that they're uh, very talented and highly motivated, and I think they can do this because I'm just a regular person and I went through all this stuff, okay? So here's, here's what they need to do on their own. Uh, number one, read the ACC accreditation handbook. All it takes is three days. Uh, the, <laughs> SFCCD Board Policy Manual, two days. Uh, 34 CFR 602 Federal Recognition Criteria, three to four days. Uh, Council for Higher Education Accreditation Recognition Policy and Procedures, a uh, quarter of a day. Uh, uh, Ed Code Title III Community Colleges with emphasis on governing boards and finance, uh, one day. Code of Regulations. Uh, excuse me, California Code of Regulations, uh, Title V. Um, this includes, you know, all the st especially the uh, finance and management and budget stuff. Um, two days. Reading the stuff on City College specifically. 2012 self-evaluation, two days. Uh, 2012 team visit report and show cause action letter, two days. Show cause team visit report and termination action letter, one day. Uh, request for review, which was secret. I don't know if they're going to keep it secret from the board. And the review decision letter, one hour. Uh, reading the appeal material, which might be secret. Uh, um, and the appeal de decision, one day. 30 Rest seconds. Okay, restoration policy and application of restoration, application for restoration, two hours time. Uh, the current or what upcoming November 2014 self-evaluation, and also the roadmap to success. And all of this shouldn't take more than 18 days, you know, on their own time. And, and, and finally, uh, they can all uh, online review the videos of the past meetings to get a feel for what's happened in the past, uh, get a feel for what kind of conduct uh, uh, happened on that board and how uh, they relate to all those standards that the Accreditation Commission is talking about. And finally, you need to evaluate the super trustee. Okay, it's in the... You've, your, your time's on it. So, all right, Martin Hittleman. Following Martin Hittleman, it's Monica Collins, Mark Farrar, and Rick Baum. Mr. Hittleman. Yeah, did you pass? Did you pass that out? Thank you. 
On June 10th, 2014, Bryce Harris testified under penalty of perjury that, quote, if I had known on July 8th, 2013, that the rules of the commission were going to be later interpreted to preclude consideration of any progress made by City College after June 2013, and that there existed no opportunity pre to preserve the accreditation of City College once the commission made the decision to terminate it, I would not have asked the Board of Governors to take the extraordinary step of setting aside the locally elected Board of Trustees and to elevate the special trustee to one with extraordinary powers. Every signal from the Commission's President, Dr. Bino, was, was that there was an opportunity to save City College, that the college may survive with the right leadership." Unquote. Chancellor Harris's testimony also disclosed a number of meetings, telephone calls, and emails between himself and ACCJC President Barbara Bino concerning the accreditation of City College of San Francisco and leading up to the appointment of a trustee with extraordinary power. It is not clear whether the ACCJC commissioners or the Board of Governors were aware of this collaboration. Several of the two conversations between Bino and Harris occurred just prior to the vote by the Commission to remove the accreditation staff status of CCSF. It appears that Bino somehow knew how the Commission would vote even before the Commission met. In any case, immediately after the vote to terminate, accreditation occurred, and before the vote was made public, Bino and Harris spoke again for the purpose of working out what could be done to save City College, unquote. Harris reached the conclusion that from Bino's point of view, quote, the only way to save City College was for the Board of Governors to take over the college, unquote. The day Harris put out a video explaining the takeover, Bino wrote him an email that read, Dear Bryce, beautiful job. Thanks for your video statement and for all the rest. We are staying late, watching the various news accounts. I think generally the news is letting people know that the college may survive with the right leadership. I look forward to watching your efforts. Have a good weekend, unquote. Harris and the Board of Governors was misled by Bino to believe that if CCSF made seconds. progress, I'm sorry? You've got 30 seconds. You've gone two and a half minutes so Okay, far. well, you can, you can read the rest. It is time. Oh, Education Code Section <coughs> 7090-1A, the Board of Governors of the California Community College shall provide leadership and direction in the continuing development. California Community College is an integral and effective element, so on. The work of the Board of Governors shall at all times, all times, be directed to maintaining and continuing to the maximum degree permissible local authority and control in the administration of the California Community College. I think it's insulting for Bryce Harris to decide whether or not the elected Board of Trustees is, is adequate to, to run a, the City College of San Francisco. It's time for the Board of Governors to act in compliance with law and good practice and immediately return the elected CCSF Board of Trustees to full power. As the people, as the people versus ACCJC testimony revealed, CCSF never should have been put on show cause. CCFS was never in critical f fiscal condition. CCSF should once again be treated in the same way as every other district in the state is treated with its own locally elected Board of Trustees. Next is Monica Collins, followed by Tark Farrar. Rick Baum. Monica, Ms. Collins, you have three minutes. Um, thank you. It probably won't be that long. I'm Monica Collins, longtime staffer at City College. Even longer time student at City College, I've got many units over the years. And um, the experiment with the special trustee has been an unmitigated disaster. That's all I have to say. I, I apologize for mispronouncing. I believe it's Tariq Farrar. Is that correct? Um, Board of Governors. Um, like Alvin Jai, I began my working career as a factory worker. Um, and I know how things hit the ground. But I'm, you know, I'm not quite as practical as he is. 
I'd like to suggest to you that there's no rhyme or reason, no basis for continuing the existence of the special trustee. He has failed at the main task he was set with, and that's keeping the school open. He's failed. But even beyond that, um, the, the statement, whatever that was, that he made along with Thelma Scott Skillman to the ACCJC about the condition of CCS, CCSF, which they interpreted as meaning that the school was in disarray, showed us an incredible lack of judgment. Um, you know, there's this, this fact of political life that we, we, we reward failure. And if we look at what happened to CCSF, it seems as though that we, we punish the opposite because we were successful in the most important, the fundamental task of an educational institution, and that is providing the best education possible for our students, 80,000 of them. You know, even the ACCJC admitted that. Even they admitted that. The, 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 the figures that, that, that your body produces about the success of schools places us, you know, in that top five or six schools out of, what, 100 schools? What happened to us was, was a, it was a, an, an injustice that almost beggars the imagination. It's time for that to end. Um, the best way to get CCSF to where it needs to be is through the immediate institution of the democrat democratically elected Board of Trustees. It's that collective wisdom that collective wisdom of, elect, of an elected body of the constituency that it represents that's the best way to solve problems. Because if it was an individual, that was the best way. How come we don't have kings, right? How come we're not a monarchy if that's the best way to get things done? There's a, there's a that West African proverb that says that the hare cannot cross the river on the crocodile's back. We seconds. CCSF are the hare. And this whole process is the crocodile. It's time for us to get off the crocodile's back and to swim. You know, we, we, the crocodile hasn't gotten, across the, got, gotten us across the river thus far. Let us off the crocodile's back, and we will swim to the other side faster than you can say whatever it is that you say. Thank you. Rick Baum, and I, I did receive uh, your, mes your message, and I did share the message you shared with me, and, along with all the documentation you'd sent me a few days ago. Were you thanking me for that? I You're said welcome. I wanted you to know that I'd received it and shared it. Sure, I know. So. Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm glad I'm able to address you today. I wish I could have also been addressing City College's democratically elected, fully empowered board of trustees during the last year and a half. Um, I want you to know that I teach American government and one of the main topics of my class is the principles of democracy. What has happened to City College during the accreditation crisis has been contrary to the principles of democracy. And one example of that has been your removal of City College's democratically elected board of trustees. The basis for, or the main rationale for your removal was the actions of the ACCJC. Since that happened when they threatened the school with closure, the ACCJC has been found by the U.S. Department of Education to not meet some of its criteria for recognition as an accrediting agency. The ACCJC has been audited by the state of California, and among the things they found was that it's inconsistent in its application of rules and had an unfair appeals process. The ACCJC, as others have said today, has been sued by the city attorney of San Francisco as a result of that suit, we now know that the ACCJC's visiting team that came to the college in 2012 unanimously did not think City College should be sanctioned on, and put place on show cause or sanctioned to that degree. Furthermore, that same 2012 visiting team concluded that the instructional programs at City College, and these are their words, provides high quality, that City College provides high quality instruction, high quality, keep that word in mind. The goal of accreditation, according to the U.S. Department of Education, is to ensure that education provided by institutions of higher education meets acceptable levels of quality. So their goal is acceptable. 
City College provided high quality. So in other words, City College exceeded the goals of accreditation put forward by the U.S. Department of Education. Even Chancellor Harris now says that City College should not have been so harshly sanctioned and threatened with closure, which was the main rationale for the takeover. So all this together for me means that the rationale for the state takeover no longer exists. Were this accreditation process just, much of what has happened to City College would never have happened. And so I would hope that in the interest of justice and democracy, you would you would act to offer a resolution today that calls for immediately and fully restoring the authority of City College's Board of Trustees. 30 seconds. That, okay. that was requested in a resolution unanimously passed last March by the voice of the people of San Francisco, its Board of Supervisors. And it would also enable you to put into practice, as Tim said previously, your democratic commitment, um, which is the item on, one of the items on your agenda. This would also be one small step toward correcting the damage that's been done to City College that has undercut the educational opportunities and programs offered at the college. It would also help to correct some of the damage done to our democracy. And I want to emphasize democracy. This is what it's all about for most of us. Thank you. Thank you. Next three are James McFadden, followed by Carol Mayer and Wendy Kaufman. Kaufman. Mr. McFadden. My name is James McFadden. I've been teaching music at City College of San Francisco since 1973. And during most of those 41 years, I was part-time at City College and had the privilege of teaching at the College of San Mateo and the Santa Rosa JC. City College was always my favorite place to teach, however. I loved the bigness of the place. The halls on that first day of school, every semester, bursting with students eager to get into a class. This semester, it was a ghost town. I love the diversity of the student body. I had a wonderful student last semester who never missed a class <clears throat> and very apologetically asked to take her final exam a week early because her children were taking her on, a, on an Alaskan cruise for her 90th birthday. <laughs> Where else can you have a 19-year-old and a 90-year-old, uh, a homeless 20-year-old, and a retired civil engineer coming together twice a week for a whole semester to support one another and encourage one another? I love the commitment to lifelong learning <laughs> that City College and the people of San Francisco uh, have made. I love the commitment and the professionalism of my colleagues on the faculty. And during the course of those 41 years, the administration of the college has changed many times. Never have I seen morale to be as, lo as low as it is right now. It's as if we've been living under an oppressive foreign occupation ever since our local board was disbanded and a special trustee with extraordinary power was imposed on us. <laughs> Chancellor Harris, if I understood correctly, testified last month that he only took that extraordinary step because he had been assured it was the only way for City College to avoid losing accreditation that obviously didn't work. It's time to stop wasting a thousand dollars a day on a special trustee <laughs> and immediately restore complete control to our local democratically elected board of trustees. <clears throat> Carol Mayer. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Carol Mayer. I teach business at CCSF. Apparently, from my colleagues' former comments, I'm high quality. Um, as when I last addressed you in July, I remain extremely grateful. California higher education has provided me with an accessible college degree that has, in turn, provided me with every blessing I have in my life today. Chancellor Harris, you came to see our faculty union, and you bravely agreed to answer any questions. 
That was brave. Um, in exasperation at one point, you said, Dr. Agrella does not wake up every morning trying to wreck CCSF. However, I sent you an email to which you were kind enough to respond entitled, um, Long List of Agrella Blunders. I did not bring 50 copies to share. You'll appreciate that. Um, but here are a few highlights. Uh, Dr. Agrella spent the 2012-2013 year firing and hiring all our administrators, shutting down shared governance instead of engaging the college leaders to solve well-recognized problems. Dr. Agrella told the ACCJC, but not even our own board, in June 2013 that CCSF did not meet the standards. Despite a positive visiting team report, the ACCJC decided to terminate our accreditation just based on his comments behind our backs. A critical aspect of leadership, as you may know from your own studies, is legitimacy. Dr. Agrella lacks legitimacy. This makes it difficult. <laughs> This makes it difficult to make any meaningful change and further spills over onto the chancellor's office with all these ugly stories about backdoor dealings and the mayor and developers and so on. Further, we at City College hear gratitude regularly when we meet our counterparts from around the state because City College has chosen to fight both the ACCJC and the chancellor's office. Note this, they see you two as intertwined. Continuing the situation is toxic. It's toxic for CCSF and it's toxic for the overall California community college system. Do you think, I heard about this technical assistance unit, do you think that they will be welcomed with open arms and trust as long as community college faculty around the state hear what happened at City College and what happens when you let these people in? 30 seconds. Is this what you want is your legacy? Thank you for your time. Wendy Kaufman. President Baca, Chancellor Harris, and the Board of Governors, we all really appreciate the opportunity to speak here. I'm Wendy Kaufman. I'm an engineering instructor at City College. I've been there for 31 years, and I love my college. City College has endured grave injustice and harm. We've endured it at the hands of the ACCJC and also at the hands of the decisions of this body. The ACCJC unjustly put us on show cause as came out in the trial a couple of weeks ago. Furthermore, so I won't talk about them so much, but what, what you can do to right the wrongs that this body has done to City College and that has been installing the special trustee with extraordinary powers. He was installed in July 2013 under two emergency resolutions. One was to change the rules that really only allowed such a move if the school was financially insolvent. City College wasn't, as you heard uh, Trustee Rizzo testify earlier. So. So that had to, you had to do an emergency change to your own rules and then 30 seconds later install the special trustee. And we know now that he was only, that only happened because Barbara Bino led Bryce Harris to believe that that was the only way to save the school. And I appreciate so much that you want to save our school. But we need to right this injustice because so much harm has been done as a result. Not just the fleeing of the students, but but like my colleague here says, the morale at the school has never been lower. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. The special trustee has made decisions that are entirely undemocratic and unaccepted by the community. He's uh, stopped the construction of the Performing Arts and Education Center, which was greatly looked forward to by many in the community and totally unjustified. Um, he's made many unpopular decisions. He is seen as an outsider. He has installed an entire upper level administration that is seen as outsiders. I've heard them called carpetbaggers, the wrecking crew. And these are the nice names that I've heard for them. You have to understand the anger that the faculty seconds. feel and the harm that we have felt being done to our students. Please right this wrong. 
install, get rid of the special trustee. You must restore the powers of our board immediately, yesterday. They never should have been taken away in the first place. And no other college requires nine months of training for their democratically elected board to take power. Your time is you need to right the wrong that's been done. You need to right the decision that this board made. Put our democratically elected trustees back now. Next three are Anita Greer, Roger Scott, and William Walker. And I, unfortunately, I believe, I just saw that Mr. Walker had to leave at one o'clock. So following that, um, Mr. Scott will be Fred Glass. But it, uh, first, Trustee Anita Greer. <clears throat> Thank you. First. Oh, yeah. Just trying to find my place. <clears throat> um, Chancellor Harris, uh, President Baca, and members of the Board of Governors. I've served on the CCSF Board of Trustees for 15 years, two terms as president and two as vice president. And I was serving as vice president until the Board of Governors, with the blessing from and PR rationale of um, Chancellor Bryce Harris and Mayor Ed Lee, abolished our democratically elected Board of Trustees and replaced us with one individual, a special trustee with extraordinary powers. It should astound no one that extraordinary powers and extraordinary decision-making wisdom are universally antithetical. In my years as trustee, I never would have imagined that an accrediting commission would try to revoke the accreditation of a community college which had some internally resolvable problems but was respected nationally for academic excellence and humane treatment of our highly competent faculty and staff. I regret that I came in fourth for the three, four year position on the CCSF Board of Trustees. But I assure you um, and all concerned that I'll continue working hard to ensure that CCSF remains as accessible and affordable college that the people appreciate and need. Like other trustees and most people in San Francisco, I assumed until 2012 that the ACCJC was a legitimate organization committed to ensuring the instructional quality and fiscal solvency of colleges like CCSF. Now, I firmly believe the crisis was manufactured, that the ACCJC was a privatizing agency, that the ACCJC leaders are power crazed, careerist bureaucrats, and that the ACCJC and their allies, including the people in this room, are enemies of the students at City College and throughout the state. In my view, the students who have the greatest need for an affordable higher education that can change their lives don't have advocates of the Board of Governors. I'm sorry to say that, but I believe it. City College has never Seconds. feared a, a legacy, I'm sorry, a legitimate accreditation process, which shouldn't function much like a teacher in assigning grades to assess the quality of performance and to provide a path for improvement. The five-day court proceedings constitute the people's evaluation of the ACCJC performance. I believe the ACCJC has abused its power, provided no real due process for challenging its harsh and irrational sanctions, and has disenfranchised thousands of students. Our democratic response to bureaucratic tyranny has been to take our struggle to the streets, to the lawmakers, and to the courts. And we will continue to struggle on every front available to us until City College of San Francisco is fully accredited, and we are again lot. providing the comprehensive, life-affirming, and affordable education of 100,000 students, as we have in the past. Our success can be the vanguard for re-energizing the California Master Plan for higher education and the liberation of students from the servitude of the trillion dollar student loan debt. 
Your time I know we shall overcome because our struggle is just. Thank you. Roger Scott, followed by Fred Glass. Uh, I feel like a, a naive, uh, nervous outsider in this bureaucratic theater of the absurd. Um, I look forward to Superior Court Carnot's decision, which I believe will be a significant victory for City College of San Francisco and the people we serve. The five-day trial itself was a great education since testimony revealed the arrogance, incompetence, opportunism, political agenda, and dishonesty of the ACCJC leadership. As a teacher who recognizes the subjectivity of grading performance, I give failing grades to the ACCJC commissioners and to those people in this room who facilitated their abuse of power. The testimony of the ACCJC leaders suggests that they didn't have to pass any language or intelligence test to get their jobs. How much common sense, deductive reasoning, professional ethics, and educational leadership should it have taken this Board of Governors to realize that the ACCJC has been an enemy of affordable and accessible public higher education? And where would we be today if those of us who believe the ACCJC sanctions were harsh and unjustified and without legitimate due process challenge, if we had relied on the counsel and assistance of Interim Chancellor Scott Skillman, Special Trustee Agrella, and Chancellor Harris, three people with EDD degrees from Nova University and combined public sector pensions and publicly funded salaries of over $1 million. Chancellor Harris and Special Trustee Agrella issued stellar statements without any criticism of the extreme ACCJC sanctions, but reminded uh, ACCJC critics, such as the people in this room, that CCSF was obligated to meet the same standards that apply to the other 111 community colleges in California, community colleges. If a Nobel Prize for pompous and irrelevant statements existed, those responses would certainly be in contention for that prize. Chancellor Harris and Special Trustee Agrella seem to take pride in informing all interested parties that San Francisco City College and the Board of Governors were not parties to the lawsuit filed by City Attorney Herrera, the action that has saved City College. So much for uh, administrative brilliance. As a teacher, I believe formal education, rational analysis, and collective judgment can lead us to the truth in almost every human endeavor. However, Serious discussion of respir restoration as a viable option and a time frame of many months to reinst reinstate our elected Board of Trustees 30 seconds. repudiate that theory. The people here today have an ethical, legal, and pedagogical mandate to reject restoration, to have our Board of Trustees returned immediately, and to have an accreditation review by competent, responsible, and ethical members of an accreditation commission, and that's certainly not the ACCJC. Uh, there are reports that Chancellor Harris is going to announce that our Board of Trustees will assume their rightful decision-making role in 2015 or 16. Your time has elapsed. Okay, one more sentence, sir. Uh, if he's so isolated from reality that he concurs with that message and expects the people to accept it, I would say that his reasoning is, is as delusional as it is irresponsible. Thank you. Fred Glass. Again, and, for and we CF have, all have your uh, your letter. Too. Right, thank you. Uh, again, um, for CFT President Joshua Peshtalt, three points have been made again and again here, and I'm going to make them also, but I will make them very briefly in the interest of time. One, the plan that you have in front of you today, having the newly elected Board of Trustees potentially waiting to be seated until July of 2016, is unnecessary and unacceptable. That's what the voters said in the election just a couple of weeks ago, and that opinion of the voters in San Francisco needs to be honored. Secondly, many people have mentioned, Chancellor Harris, your conversation with Barbara Bino that led you to believe that the appointment of the special trustee was the only way to save the accreditation of City College of San Francisco. Ms. Bino did not keep her end of the bargain. The bargain is null and void. We believe the authority of the trustees 
never should have been usurped in the first place. And third, it is at the very least ironic, and more to the point, just plain wrong, that the very institution charged with supporting democracy in our country through education should itself be prevented from exercising democratic governance. Please return full authority to the elected City College of San Francisco Board of Trustees as soon as possible in 2015. Thank you. Next three speakers are Bridget Skiba, Martin Madrigal, and Alan Fisher. And I hope I pronounced uh, Bridget's last name right. Skiba or Skia? Martin Madrigal and Alan Fisher. Ms. Skiba's Hi. first. Hi, my name is Bridget Skiba. I'm a student at City College um, in a dis disabled department. And um, I want to thank everybody for um, allowing me to have a democratic voice and speak. Um, and just as your two people that just got elected today, they start, they go into office tomorrow. And I was hoping that our board of trustees go into office tomorrow also and become active. In 74 years of City College, there has never been a delay in the board of trustees to begin their positions. They are qualified and that's why they were elected by the people. So I strongly would like for them to start tomorrow. Um, um, City College is tailored to give everyone an opportunity to achieve, achieve um, an education and to um, City College is one of the best colleges that there ever is. And without City College and without our democratic voice, then it will be nothing. It will continue to dwindle as, as it is doing right now. Um, since this whole accreditation thing began, you know, we have lost like so many students. And I mean, students like myself, like I, I struggle to learn, but City College is kind of tailored where so they know what the students need. The teachers are excellent. Everyone is excellent there. And there's no reason unless if there are under, unless if there are motives, you know, and I hope that money is like not the motive to try to privatize City College. Um, it's here and um, it's been here for 74 years and I hope that our board of trustee can come back tomorrow. And I've been reading your information, and this is this is what we asked for: democratic commit commitment. You guys, you have democracy commitment declaration, and then another one: democracy commitment. With 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 you guys on here, this is what we want: our board of trustees to be on here, and we would like it to say democracy as well. I don't think that we're really asking for much. And um, 30 seconds. OK. Empowering students to become agents of change. That's all we're really asking for. We want to be empowered. We want our board of trustees to represent us and to be our voice. You take away our board of trustees, then we have no voice. And the reason for a delay is, is I still can't find a reason you know, to go into training. Well, weren't they, they're qualified from the beginning when they were, um, they're qualified from the beginning when they were elected. So I hope that, you know, what I say today have, have made a change. And please, let our elected boards, board of trustees begin and remove the threat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Martin. Martin Madrigal. Distinguished members of the board. My name is Martin Madrigal, and I am proud to say that I will soon be an alumnus of City College of San Francisco as a mathematics major, transferring to San Jose State in the spring of 2015. However, I come before you not only as a United States Army veteran of four tours of combat duty, but as an activist for underrepresented students, the Safe CCSF Coalition, and Mecha the CCSF. 
I fulfilled my obligation to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and I am appalled that this body is considering prolonging the continued obstruction of democracy in the form of the special trustee with ex exceptional powers. The ACCJC has been scrutinized by federal, state, and city officials to include the U.S. Department of Education, which found the commission out of compliance feder with federal regulations citing conflicts of interest and inadequate representation on visiting teams. The California State Auditor also agreed, unleashing an 80-page report with their findings and further recommending an option that allows community colleges to choose an accreditor other than the ACCJC. In March, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors unanimously passed a resolution demanding this board restore the elected Board of Trustees no later than July 31st. We, re re we reiterate the facts to enlighten the board that the student population has been and will continue to closely monitor the accreditation process. The, usurp the usurpation of democracy should be more than enough reason to end the reign of the special trustee considering that during his tenure, CCSF has, su has suffered continuous drops in enrollment, further sinister cuts to classes and student services, and a grotesque mutation of the great diversity of the communities and constituencies that CCSF serves in order to ensure inclusivity and social justice remain inseparable characteristics of San Francisco. The fact remains that it was not the actions of the special trustee that kept our school's accreditation alive, but rather the activism of students, faculty, and the community that sparked the lawsuit to challenge the ACCJC's ruling to terminate our school. <laughs> Recall the definition of insanity is to repeat the same action ex expecting a different result each time, thus expecting the special trustee to do what he already failed to do again with more time is not only unrealistic, but irresponsible to the community your body is entrusted to serve. Students are fed up with this the theatrical approach to an issue that balances the livelihoods of marginalized students. The only way to salvage any form of credibility is to simply uphold the very standards behold and responsibilities beholden to your position. To do so would require two simple actions. Discard the draft proposal and immediately restore the Board of Trustees and abolish the Special Trustees. Students will no longer tolerate further deception and this Board can be assured that the student response and the community response will be swift and heavy in its impact. Thank you for your time. Okay. Alan Fisher, followed by, uh, Alan Fisher's next. Esteemed me uh, members of the Board of Governors, uh, I have been an ESL instructor at City College for 34 years. The students, staff, and faculty, uh, and the people of San Francisco love City College. Last night, I received an email from the former um, president of the Academic Senate of City College, Karen Saginor. And I was very impressed with her email, and I, she gave me permission to read some of it. She identifies two flaws with your plan to extend this, uh, the special trustee. The first is that you're denying the people of San Francisco the right to, to participate in the important decision making that is going to be at City College. The second flaw is the plan, it, with the plan, is the proposal as written would place control of the process into the hands of a person who has a major conflict of interest. For each step of the way, Bob Agrella will be asked to decide how soon he wants to relinquish power and put a stop to the generous paychecks he now receives. <laughs> Perhaps you are not aware that Bob Agrella was in a situation that created a conflict of interest for him in June 2013. He had been invited by the City College Board of Trustees to serve as special trustee with major responsibilities for steering the college through the show cause process. Two weeks ago in oral testimony in the case of the People versus the ACCJC, six of the ACCJC commissioners testified under oath about why they voted to terminate City College accreditation at that June 2013 meeting. Each one of them said that Bob Agrella presented a powerfully negative view of the college to them. 
the commissioners told the court that it was after hearing from Baba Grella that they decided that contrary to what they had read in the visiting team report, City College had made almost no progress in meeting standards and was unlikely to make any in the future. Most of the commissioners told the court that a major influence on their decision was the fact that no member of the City College Board of Trustees had come to the ACCJC meeting. The faithful decision to exclude members of the board from that meeting had been made by Bob Agrella, as acknowledged by one of the commissioners. So in June 2013, Bob Agrella told ACCJC that the accreditation work seconds. that he had been overseeing was unsuccessful and that the college was on the brink of failure. He helped persuade the commissioners to vote for termination, whether or not that was his intention. We know that the consequence of the termination vote has been destructive to the college and especially to the members of the community driven away by the news of the determination and the rumors of imminent closure. But the personal consequences of that meeting for Bob Agrella was his elevation to a more powerful position at this point, it is not fair to the city of San Francisco or to our Bob Grell himself to, to put him in the position of acting as the gatekeeper to determine when he himself will be unnecessary and unemployed. Your time please is amend your plan, and I would add, please uh, 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 reinstate the Board of Trustees, allow them to begin work in January of 2015. Thank you. Next three are Ann Killebrew, Javier Maltese, and Oscar Pena. Ann Killebrew. Good afternoon. Um, I signed a paper to speak before you because I thought Alan Fisher wouldn't be able to finish the letter from the librarian at City College. Um, and so I'm here to say thank you for listening to all of us. I taught at City College for um, over 25 years and um, luckily I haven't had to face the sadness of students being turned away, classes being um, closed. Um, many of the classes closed before um, the usual two and a half weeks or so when uh, just many arbitrary kinds of decisions have been made over these past four years that are of great detriment to the many, many students who come in hopes of having a better life. Or some people come because they're just having fun taking classes, and that gives them a good life. Um, there are many reasons why they come to City College, but uh, so many classes have been closed. Things are dire. Um, and yet the city rallies, the students rally, the faculty rally. They've raised money. They've met so many kinds of um, issues. They've passed bond measures. They've helped with Proposition 30. All of these kinds of things show the energy and the ability of the people of San Francisco, all the students. And what they've done is elect a new board of trustees. We would like, mm -hmm. as the democratic process, like the governor's race and the lieutenant governor and all these other people who are going to be changing office in January, we would like the new duly elected board of trustees for the City College of San Francisco to be seated in January, just like anybody else. Thank you very much. Javier Maltese from the staff of Assemblymember Amiano. Thank you. I'm uh, going to be reading a letter from the assembly member. In 2013, the California Community College Board of Governors passed a resolution to allow the California Community College Chancellor to suspend the authority of the elected CCSF Board of Trustees and delegate to the special trustee the rights, duties, and powers of the governing board for a period of one year. The Board of Governors submitted the recommended action in order to preserve public peace, health and safety, general welfare, and to address the fiscal situation affecting CCF, CCSF.
The one-year period of authority for the special trustee has lasted. In light of this, as well, of statement, as well as statements that have been made in court, I urge you and your board to immediately return local authority to the duly elected CCSF Board of Trustees. Under, under a recently revealed plan by the State Chancellor for Community Colleges, the voters of San Francisco and their elected Board of Trustees would have to wait to nearly 2016 before regaining the authority that was stripped from them. This plan was created and published without the input of the CCSF Board of Trustees, which, in correction, they were brought in to uh, put some input on Friday of last week. The Board of Trustees are elected to represent their constituents and as such should be involved in any planning, including preparations for the return to authority. The plan released by the State Chancellor would extend the suspension of authority to no less than nine months and no more than 18 months until full restoration of powers. This suspension has already reached the 18-month mark, much too long for an elected board to be re removed from the decision-making and for voters to be left mute. There is no justification for suspending public oversight of this district for this length of time. As you know, the visiting team of evaluators has testified that they had unanimously recommended probation, not show cause, as the appropriate sanction for CCSF, the Accreditation Commission for Community ACCJC, ignored the advice of its own experts and issued the harsher sanction. In a sworn statement, Chancellor Bryce Harris said that he would not have suspended the Board of Trustees had he known the ACCJC would not have granted full accreditation. In the most recent legislative session, I, Assemblymember Amiano, authored Assembly Bill 2087, requiring regulations describing the conditions in which a school may be assigned a special trustee. The bill also states that there is meaningful, that meaningful consultation must take place with the Board of Trustees prior to decision making. This bill received bipartisan support and was signed by the governor. Had this bill been in place in 2013, the Board of Trustees could not have been suspended. The Board of seconds. Trustees had passed a balanced budget with the surplus and had followed the advice of the Board of Governors. In fact, the Board of Trustees approved every measure that the special trustee put before them. There is currently a communication breakdown between the voters of San Francisco, their elected Board of Trustees, and those making decisions for CCSF. Several disturbing emails between the State Chancellor and President Bino show their belief that there is no purpose to have an elected governing board. State Chancellor Harris also promised in the emails to be very communicative with the Commission, ACCJC. However, the Chancellor has made little to small effort to communicate with the elected board. Your time By has elapsed. Okay, you thank you. And I also have a copy for please, you as well. Please share it with us. We'll add it to the record. Oscar Pena, and as I understand, you're taking the spot of Elisa Messer, is, yes. is the, what, the note I have on this yes. card. Yes. <clears throat> um, can I start? Yes, please, go All ahead. Right. <clears throat> Why is this issue important? Because it's about restoring democracy and to be transparent with everyone. That with the Board of Trustee, when they were operating, we did have democracy and there was transparency that people of the public were able to attend the meetings. And meetings went all the way till one, two o'clock in the morning. At the same time, now that there's this one man who's making the most critical and vital decisions of our school is out of order. That meetings are closed doors. And for many months when he was put on, he was not having any public comment sessions at all. But he was in violation. At the same time, our school has been going through so much with the ACCJC trying to close our school, and there have been 110 classes cut just this semester. Many students are concerned, confused, and most of all, very upset at the way of the Board of Governance has not been representing the students properly. Why is the Board of Trustee important to come back? sooner than 2016 is because the chancellor at our school and the special trustee have been hiring many people that are either interns or outside of our county. So there has been so much transitioning going on at our school and there is no fair process at all of hiring these people that are coming to our school. 
such as the Vice Chancellor of Student Development, who, is the, who has been replaced over and over for the last three years. There have been six people in that position. Now we have this one guy named Michael Poindexter who came from Sacramento Community College, who doesn't know anything about San Francisco. Now let's be real, that this is, has been very disrespectful towards students and towards everyone just trying to get their degrees and people who are working. Not only has it been disrespectful, but the, the school doesn't care of the students. And so now there have been many issues on even trying to bring guns onto our campus that we don't even want that. We don't want our campus police to be militarized as police officers are. And, most, and, and my point is, is that a student, I'm a student today and I'm not speaking of anything else, although I am the body president, I'm the student body president at Ocean Campus, but I am a student today. That I'm not happy with the way how things are going on at our school. There's no transparency, no fair processing is happening. 30 seconds. I know that if you had this same situ situation with your Board of Governance, if you had one man doing your job, you would be upset as well. And so think of that. Bring back our Board of Trustees back now, and we have much work to do that needs to be done, and it's not going to be done by one man anymore. We want our Board of Trustees back, and we want them now. Thank you. The next three are Alan D'Souza, Richard Hansen, and Omar Boss. Alan D'Souza is first. Please. My name is Alan D'Souza. I was a student at City College for nine years, and now I'm a librarian there and AFT Vice President, AFT 2121 Vice President. Uh, thank you for uh, considering a plan to return local control back to our college. Um, however, this plan, as you've heard from many people, uh, has, was done with little or no uh, co close consultation with our board of trustees, and that's really difficult to sit here and try to approve a plan that greatly affects not our, our board, but our schools and our students. We've had many students here speak today, and when we are here talking about plans and futures and, and uh, uh, policies, it would be great to consider what's actually happening outside of this room, outside this, uh, on, our, on our campuses, that, that it affects students primarily. We're at City College, we're hemorrhaging students, and a plan like this would only continue the, continue the hemorrhaging of students uh, day by day. You've also heard about the testimony that came out in the courts in, the recent, in recent days, in the last few weeks, and we know what, what, that Bino uh, testified to denying due process to City College, that Agrella himself uh, uh, used facts about the state of our college that were incorrect and, and blatantly false. Um, Chancellor Harris, yourself, you acknowledged that your expectations of, of what, was, what your promises from Bino would not, did not come through, and Steve Kinsella, who predicated much of his testimony on the financials of City College, cherry-picked numbers that, were, that, that did not truly represent the state of City College, and which, which was the foundation of many of the uh, commissioners to uh, discredit uh, City College. So now, acknowledging that all those errors were made, and knowing that your intentions are to secure uh, the accreditation of City College, it would be prudent to consider all that evidence and to take corrective action now and not delay it for another six, eight, nine, 10, 12 months and, and reverse this action today and put our board of trustees back, back in power. Thank you. Mr. Hansen. Hello, I'm Rich Hansen. I'm here for the CCCI, the California Community College Independence, but also for FAC. We'll get two of us in one here. Um, Back when the decision was made to go for a special trustee, many faculty voiced concerns about this very issue. How do we get back? Um, with the, in the case of Compton, they haven't gotten back. We didn't want to see that happen again for um, uh, San Francisco City College. So um, on that basis, um, my, my organizations are appreciative of the effort to bring this issue forward as expeditiously as you have. You're facing it up front. 
uh, we're thankful for that and appreciate what you've done. You've essentially laid out a roadmap and we can discuss uh, how we might want to have a different roadmap, but we appreciate the effort. <laughs> and certainly the um, voices that you've heard today show how important it would be to restore nor normalcy uh, to City College as quickly as possible. And that's what I would like to stress. In the final paragraph, you talk about the milestones along this roadmap. I, I hope you'll watch very closely uh, with, in some sense, an eagerness to move this process forward as quickly as possible. There's a lot at stake and a lot of passions involved. Um, I trust you to do that for us. Thank you very much. Omar Pass. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to be speaking to you on behalf of uh, the 2.1 million students of California Community College System, as well as a variety of perspectives that this system has provided me throughout my years within it. First, I'd like to speak to you from the perspective of a student trustee and a club member at Santa Rosa Junior College in participating in both the Metro the SRJC and the Black Student Union and NAACP chapter. I want to commend the students in this room who have followed this process over the past few years, who have taken it upon themselves to advocate fiercely for the restoration of accreditation, to have the courageousness to work together and unite on this issue. Uh, giving a little bit of perspective on this, we just recently concluded our fall General Assembly for the statewide Senate, and uh, with over 80 colleges in attendance and over 600 student leaders from across the state uniting on various statewide issues, one of them being CCSF's accreditation. For the first time in a few uh, sessions, the CCSF contingent was present and received a standing ovation for participating in this event when they have a lot more pressing matters on their hands. I'd just like to highlight that this process has been inconsistent and has contributed to a lot of structural barriers that with all the initiatives going on in the state, it would seem that we would be moving towards preemptive, uh, well, preventative measures as opposed to reactionary ones, which in this case I would say it's more reactionary than anything. It's unfortunate that students are the ones who are suffering the most. I don't, I, I've, find it a little appalling to see that students are no, not mentioned in the transition plan at all. It's, it's not fair to assume that we're going to follow the shared governance processes that are outlined in air ed education code. We need to reaffirm our commitment as a system to include the student voice in this process. I'm also speaking to you on behalf as of the region I am. we are currently in. Uh, region 3, that is the 13 community colleges of the Bay Area. Um, again, uh, this has been an ongoing issue and we really support the students who are out here working together to move this process forward. And I would like to emphasize that when you have this many public comments and this many uh, various perspectives coming and saying that they can handle this, I think we should trust that judgment. And I think we should move, seconds. do anything we can to, 30 seconds, thank you. Do anything we can to support that. And rather than uh, create barriers and, and establish checkpoints that are mandatory, they should be guiding support and lend, it should be lending a hand, not putting these, <coughs> this, uh, college on a leash. So I would really appreciate the consideration of both shortening that timeline and removing the barriers that I see these checkpoints as. Thank you. The final three speakers will be Christine Hansen, Wendy Aragon, and Harry Bernstein. Christine Hansen. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Honorable Board of Governors, Chancellor Harris, thank you for listening to us. My name is Christine Hansen. I am a resident and native of San Francisco. I have also been lucky enough to have attended, C attended CCSF. This body has taken away my right to representation under taxation. I would like this right to be restored today. Applause 
The process leading up to this removal has been led by the actions of a rogue accrediting body. Please don't forget that. Your proposed plan endorses again granting complete control of CCSF to a special trustee now for a period of up to 18 months. But it goes further by specifying his word only as the metric whereby City College is judged. And with that, this Board of Governors, a body of individuals obviously committed to California's community colleges, gives away its own ability to gauge the situation and advocate for City College. While this body apparently has great trust in their special trustee, <clears throat> Do you really know what he's been up to? <laughs> Do you actually know where he's spending our money? Because we don't. For example, do you know that for the past two years, City College is the only community college not to report the wages paid to its staff on the website Transparent California? Why would this body not only take away the power of our elected Board of Trustees for potentially another 18 months, or, well, till whenever Bob says they're ready, um, but, but why might you, with this proposal, toss away your own power? You have the power granted to you by the state of California to govern, to lead, to advocate and support the community colleges of California. 30 seconds. With this proposal, you give that power to just one man. Please, don't be a captive participant. Restore democracy. Bring back our Board of Trustees today. <laughs> Although January works for me too. Wendy Aragon. Hi. So today is a homecoming for me because I'm an alumna of this institution. Mm -hmm. I spent much of my time in this very building as a young student leader um, before I transferred on to San Francisco State and moved to San Francisco where I became engaged in community activism. I say this institution, I credit this institution with not only the second chance programs that, it helped, that helped me to realize my full potential, but being a catalyst for me as a successful adult and as a community activist. I identify my own educational path with what's happening at City College. You see, I came to this college struggling academically and I left here thriving. When I ran for the Board of Trustees, which I did not win, I spoke to the great concerns about the state of City College and I had a vision of what it could be, often reflecting on my time here at De Anza. I believe that the community college system serves, as a vital, serves a vital purpose of helping people to find their path to success, giving people second chances, and elevating people up out of poverty. City College deserves that chance to thrive, and it cannot do that without its elected board of trustees. Our elected board has had its problems and its dysfunction. That is true. But for better or worse, our elected board has also had the best interests of City College at heart. I do not believe that special trustee with extraordinary powers, Bob Agrella, shares that sentiment. Our board would not have used homeowner parcel tax money approved by a popular vote that was meant for student services, classrooms, and teachers to raise the salaries of our administrators while our faculty, our classified staff, and our students can barely afford to live in San Francisco. Our board would not have allowed vital second chance programs like Guardian Scholars, which offers educational opportunities to transitional age foster students, to lose funding and staff. Our board would not hold meetings that are closed off to the public in violation of several transparency laws. Our Board of Trustees would not have allowed for the physical assault of students who simply wanted to enter a building to be heard by him. Our college, 
has not been better off for the last 18 months with a special trustee. It's seconds. been worse. And I have concerns that another 18 months will only show us more of the same. It's time to restore our duly elected Board of Trustees so that our college can reach its full potential and continue to serve the people of San Francisco. Thank you. Harry Bernstein. I'm Harry Bernstein, an instructor at City College. Uh, Chancellor Harris and members of the Board of Governors, thank you for listening uh, to our concerns today. Chapter 7 of the Task Force on Student Success report states, local district control remains a bedrock principle of the California Community College system. There follow several pages in that same report that seek to erode that bedrock, building up a stronger community college system office at the expense of local control. Haven't we lost sight of that bedrock principle? Serious concern for the return of local district control for CCSF brought many of us out today. Some of today's arguments will be similar to what you heard at your meeting in July. That's why it's so difficult to know how to reach you today. In July, a little history. In July 2013, Chancellor Harris ardently exhorted you to remove the elected Board of Trustees of City College without acknowledging his cooperation with ACCJC President Barbara Bino to achieve that end. You complied with his request. Uh, then in July, in July 2014, it was time to extend or terminate the term of Special Trustee Agrella, and there was vociferous public comment against the extension. Um, Harris had already stated under oath that removing the trustees had been a mistake, yet you endorsed Harris and his appointee Agrella. Harris offered to draft a plan to return the Board of Trustees to its elected function, but you amended the plan. You agreed that it should be drawn up in consultation with the members of the Board of Trustees, the very people who would be affected by the plan. Um, now this has to be changed a little bit because he did take some input at the very last minute, did make some changes, but that plan I th feel would be less punitive, less mistrustful, less extended if those trustees had had a chance to figure in on its drafting in the first place. Um, even today's draft plan notes that the college had done extensive... Oh, 30 seconds. Okay. Let me point out in the court testimony and city attorney's lawsuit against ACCJC underlined the flawed accreditation process whereby ACCJC issued an unjustified show cause sanction to City College in 2012. This improper sanction was the pretext for your uh, removal of the elected board. You have the power today to right these compounded errors please return our elected Board of Trustees to begin to reverse the damage, <clears throat> the downsizing at City College under the Agrella administration. Final comment on issue race at your July meeting. We are still waiting for the reestablishment of the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee, which the current administration has improperly allowed to lapse. I know you, you requested update on that. And finally, Ms. Bino said in response to uh, Mr. Harris, on the two days after the uh, loss of the board. I think at some point the CCSF trustees will have to be reseated or an alternative governance system accepted by the commission. There is probably no reason that we'd require an elected Time governing elapsed. board. Is there? Is that what's at stake here, that she's trying to help you to get rid of governance of the uh, elected board? President Baca, that concludes the public Thank comment. you very much. Thank, thank all of you for your, your comments. Now, I, I, I think I can speak on, on behalf of all the members here and certainly uh, uh, Chancellor Harris in saying that uh, there is nothing more than we would like to, to bring um, normalcy back to City College San Francisco, and we're going to continue to work towards that end. Uh, I will now open up... Uh, Discussion, board members? 
Any um, comments? Member Solano? Just briefly, um, I want to thank everybody for coming up, coming down, sorry, coming down from San Francisco. Um, I'm always impressed by the passion of the community because it is a community from CCSF. Um, your commitment to democracy and to the process. Um, and for the most part, your respectfulness to our process. Uh, for the most part. Uh, I want to uh, thank Chancellor Harris for putting together this plan and more importantly, um, meeting with the new board of trustees, well, all of the board of trustees from the CCSF, but including the new members and revising that plan accordingly as we had requested at our last board meeting. Um, it may not be what the community here would like to see, but it's an orderly process with milestones that have been jointly described with the new board members from San Francisco. Um, the dates have been adjusted as a result, and uh, it's an action plan that we can hold our special trustee accountable to, and we would expect that, as we know, you would like to restore this as soon as possible and as successfully as possible bring CCSF back to its accreditation status. So I want to thank you for your plan and for the adjustments that have been made. And then also request that at our next meeting, we have the special trustee provide a status of, and uh, uh, we hope we'll also see some members from CCSF Board of Trustees show up, I'm sure they will, um, to provide their version of the status along this time frame. Where are we? So, so in January, we'll hear back from our special trustee where along these various phases um, we've made progress, and I expect we'll have some commentary from the San Francisco, the elected CCSF Board of Trustees. Um, I want to assure the members of the San Francisco Community College community that this Board of Governors is very interested in restoring local control. We don't want to be in charge of your institution. We don't want an unelected special trustee in charge of your community asset. Um, but we also have... You were sort of respectful of our process. Um, so we want to thank, I want to thank you for coming and we will be seeing you in a couple of months, I'm sure. But mostly I want to say that there's a lot of us that are new here. If you look around the room, I think we're more than a majority of the board is new. And I'm sure we'll have new members joining as well in the coming months. This is a complex process that many of us are just learning about. And we appreciate you helping to educate us about the process. We appreciate you giving us a status report, sending us information. It has made it much more useful to us and, and has made it easier for us to exercise our responsibility as a Board of Governors. So thank you for your continuous commitment. Any other comment? Member, uh, uh, Vice President Baum. I just had a question for uh, the Chancellor too. At what point do we expect a decision on restoration status for the, um, from the commission? And that'll be at the January commission meeting. I don't know what those dates are. They're about the second week in January. I was just wondering if it's prior to our... Uh, uh, I, in this case, I don't think that... I think that it is... I think the commission meeting is prior to the board meeting. We may meeting, not be we notified put, about the decision. That, that's correct. Mm -hmm. we, we pushed the uh, meeting for the January budget, but the notification of the commission actions is normally um, about a month in arrears of the meeting. Okay, so that's just something to be mindful of as we evaluate the steps along in this process. <clears throat> Any other comments? Member Sumner. Um, I'd like to thank everybody's passion. Um, this is, I would probably say, a little overwhelming at times being a, a new board member. And I really like the fact that we got a chance to look at this and with some of the modifications and changes and keywords that I know that sometimes is hard to hear when you hear no authority, then I hear from you about morale, I mean, you know, returning back to normalcy, returning back power, you know, closed sessions, not knowing the truth. I think we all need some more clarity on some of the truths that, you know, you know, I even have a little bit of confusion, but I think it's a process that needs to take place. But I'd like to see, um, like uh, Cecilia said, at the next time to have something more from the trustee. I'd like a deliverable from him so we have more of what is going on. Because there's a lot of passion and a lot of care in this room. And to say the word no authority, coming from being in the military, and I have to say the Army, 
I, I'm very passionate for what he said. And he, that right there is a success for the college because to have him stand up like he did. And that passion is something that will carry us with democracy that we have. And I'm so thank you for your service and thank you for your passion. And I just like to be supportive of this approach as we do it and to maybe have more communication going back and forth with the, the board on this because this really is an important decision to make. So well, there's any other comments by members? Just just a technical note on uh, the last two bullets on what would be page three just need to be renumbered. So it's phase four and phase five. Oh. Okay. It's just it's just a Thank technical you. one because I catch. think we're going to be getting reports based on those phases, so we just want to get the numbering Thank you. right. Member Van Loon. Uh Yes, I'd like to piggyback on the comments thus far. Um, given uh, the state of uh, CCSF right now, um, I'd like to see a lot more information in the coming months uh, as to what exactly the status is because we are outlining a timeline here. Uh, and obviously we want to restore the democratic principles and uh, democracy back to the local board of trustees. That's really the beauty of our system is the shared governance and is the input, um, especially from the student's standpoint, is we can bring resolutions and, and policy changes forth through that process to the board of trustees. And currently uh, at CCSF, they're not going to be able to do so um, with the special trustee. And restoring that power back to the students is of the utmost necessity at this point. And so um, in order to outline a timeline, I think that we do need to become a little bit more well-versed on what the exact status of the institution is. Um, so I would like to see um, Dr. Agrella um, come here at our next board meeting as well, or even uh, preferably before that, so we can get a, a, a good idea as how as to how we should roll this out, um, because it is of the utmost importance to roll it out properly and uh, efficiently, so we can um, install them as soon as possible. And I believe that is is the intent. Uh, this this is not uh, Member Epstein. Oops. Yeah. Hi. Um I, uh, I'm relatively new. I wasn't here um, when the decision was originally made, and I unfortunately missed the July board meeting, so I didn't get to hear uh, the discussion there. Um, and I have to admit, I mean, I think uh, it's clear that, that, uh, that you all have a legitimate grievance against the accrediting commission, I think, as does this board. Uh, and that, uh, and I'm personally, you know, I, I learned some things today, and, and I'm, uh, and I'm personally open-minded about about how this all turns out. Um, but I, I have to admit, I was a little disappointed that, uh, except for one person, there was, uh, there was no acknowledgement that maybe there was something awry uh, a while ago uh, with uh, with CCSF that that, need, that that wasn't being handled well, and I, and I, and I was not appreciative of the. The personal attacks on on the chancellor, who I know uh, feel very strongly, has been trying to do what what's best for for CCSF, and there's certainly no no motive to try and and, and not do it. I, mean, I think we're all concerned about the, the the reduction in the enrollment, and we'd all uh, really like to see CCSF uh, recover quickly. And 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 so I I would hope in the continuing discussions it would be uh, less, uh, you know, of the attack on the motives of the people involved and just try and get to a solution that works. Thank you. Any other comments by members? Uh, yeah. Uh, member, uh, but um, I mean, first, I, I just want to thank you guys, faculty and staff, <clears throat> for your passion, for how much you care. And students, I meant, I meant students and staff, sorry. Students and faculty. Um, I'm here, I'm on this board because I, I mentor a lot of students within the community college system. Students who don't have many other options. And I know students who go and have gone to San Francisco City College and the incredible education uh, and love they've been given on that campus. Um, I'm incredibly dubious of the Accreditation Commission. I'm thankful for Chancellor Harris and what he's having to do to get through this. Um, I have one question for the Chancellor, and uh, that is uh, I, we come up with a nine to 18 month window. Um, with the passion in this room 
and a determination of a locally elected board, is there any chance that that can be expedited um, if everyone's working together? Uh, Yeah, I, 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 uh, I tried to underscore this earlier, and I'll, I'll make the point again. If you look at the second page, it's really, um, I think, uh, quite explicit. The exact length of time necessary would be determined by the progress of the board. And, and it says uh, envisioned to take no less than nine and no more than 18 months. I, I, I think the speed with which this takes place will be largely dependent on uh, the locally elected board, and as I tried to mention when, when I introduced this item. I was favorably impressed with that, uh, those folks when I talked with them on Thursday and Friday. And uh, they certainly display uh, not only a, a willingness, but an ability to move quite quickly. So, so it, it will be. So if, guys, come on, let's respect the chancellor as we've all respected you during the public comment. Um, so if you, <clears throat> so if the locally elected board has the, um, the passion and work ethic of this group here and can move uh, mountains in a few months, um, this could be expedited to, to the summer to be ready for a fall semester, uh, in theory, if, if everyone works together? Again, I, I think that's going to be determined by that board and, and, and their, um, their, their uh, willingness to, to move at, at, uh, at Developing the, at developing those uh, milestones because the, the milestones are not specified here. They suggest the local board is going to have a voice in what those milestones look like. So once those are developed, then the pathway uh, through to restoration of the board ought to be relatively clear. Great. Thanks, Chancellor. Any other comments? Members, I want to, uh, uh, again, thank everybody here, as all my colleagues have. I want to thank the Chancellor for uh, his uh, clarifications that uh, he's given and uh, the explanations that he's given. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the, the plan set before us is, uh, you know, a serious one in which, you know, we have tried to uh, look at the concerns of all people within the stakeholder groups. And so, um, you know, I reiterate what my colleagues, uh, Member Estelano, uh, but also especially Member Epstein has said about the you know, seriousness with which uh, this body and the chancellor's office has given to this issue. And so, uh, you know, uh, no one here has taken this very lightly. Those of us who have been on this board for quite some time have not taken it lightly during the entire time that this issue has been debated. You know, it's been done with the utmost of uh, uh, concern for the people who are involved in this system and especially the students. And so, um, I, you know, I'm hoping that uh, this is resolved as quickly as possible. And I believe that the process that the chancellor has put forth to us is one that is serious, that addresses the problems that uh, are at hand, but one that also focuses on making sure that the people involved are going to re receive uh, both the system that they are going to um, benefit from uh, by far, and that we'll leave it to them in a better way than it started off. So I want to thank everybody involved. Thank you. Well, one last comment. Is there a way uh, before the next uh, board meeting that we could get something sent to us so that we receive uh, the big outstanding accreditation items that are really the, you know, the top ones that are really the big concerns? Because I'd li I'd really like to know what those are. Because I mean, I know that they're, hopefully they are all aware of what they are and if they're not, that would be a concern, is to know what those top concerns are, because that's the only way you can truly work, you know, work on them. Any other comments? You know, I, I want to say that um, you know, as chair of this body over the last uh, two years, and being in regular contact with the chancellor, um, realized that this is something that, when he was appointed, didn't realize that he was going to have to deal with. Uh, had to deal with it, this body had to deal with it, because there are other actors involved. And uh, our interest from the very beginning has been to preserve the existence of City College and uh, been working towards that end. It's taken a great deal of time on, on 
the part of the chancellor and the staff in the chancellor's office and um, things have not been not been smooth as I indicated there are many players involved in this uh, there isn't anyone in this room that would like to have had this matter come before us uh, as it has but nevertheless we have it and uh, we're dedicated to work through it with you and I know that the Chancellor's intent from the very beginning in this has been toward that end, uh, despite the fact that he has many, many other responsibilities and has to devote a lot of time to a very, very large system. Uh, appreciate you coming here today because uh, all of these comments further enlighten us and as very significantly the Chancellor and uh, it's taken into, into consideration. With that, uh, we will recess till the morning.